one thing that's really important when you do hand-drawn animation is plotting arcs and it can be very difficult when you're overlaying all these images to see where the arcs are so one trick we used to do back in the day would be to use a little dot put a clean sheet of paper down put all your keys down all your in-betweens and pick a point that's really important like the middle of the head or the center of the eyes and put a dot and then the number next to it and then you could go all the way through and go plot 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 and then you've got this little hopefully beautiful smooth arc plot and sometimes you'd see like one or two drawings that are quink like a little out of place those are the mistakes what you want to do is plot the arcs how do you do that in here well one crude way i could do it is you know brush tool pick a nice bright color smallish enough brush point and be sure you draw on the right layer not the wrong layer and so we can go right that's one that's nine one nine this doesn't have to be pretty this one is 17 23 don't worry about the rest that suggests we should be looking at an arc you know something like that so let's see what the program did because i didn't have control over this at that grain because i'm tweening everything around the place so i would go okay and we can just about plot it here and i didn't make the beautiful arc guide layer on the last one so as you can see it's kind of getting tricky now to like go exactly where are the center points but it's it's not looking too bad like even just at this level of analysis i think we are doing stuff that looks really nice um there's certainly like a a, a sudden pop forward here kind of thing you get away with but if, if we were being picky we might want to do something about that it might involve changing some of the, the internal tweens to pull them a little closer to this end space them out a bit better here but i'm not too bothered we could also add a frame here so that these go a bit tighter but let's see I don't have a sponsor, so if you want to support my work and help it to continue, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm making new animation projects week by week and providing animation assets that can be downloaded and used. I also have a very large collection of tutorials in the LinkedIn Learning Library covering animation and design, and I'm putting all the links to these in the notes below. While well, it's a quicker way that's more interactive that doesn't involve doing this, I'm not saying don't do this. This is very handy for some things that might not be uh, convenient to do, like tips of hair and stuff like that. You can use that. But there is a cheat. I love cheats. Let's go into the head. What I'm going to do is guide out all of these. And there is a, a toggle guide extension, which I'm not using, but I should. So you can select multiple frames, command, toggle guide. I will make a movie showing some of the extensions that I've got and tricks for using the program better. So let's make a little ball, a little cross X or whatever. Just uh, draw the oval tool, doink, and put that in the center. So what I want to do is window, align, align the stage, center it, center it. Or you can visually put it down too, but that way I know it's perfect. I'm going to call this one X guide. And now I've got this little red dot that I can plot more accurately. Let's hide everything and we can go uh, onion skin. That's better. So now we can see and make sure that we have uh, anchor markers on and they're all selected. So if I go to the outer timeline, it's kind of getting cluttery with the body. So again, easy enough. We can go into the body and select everything here. Command toggle guide back to the main stage. How great is that? So now we can see pretty much what our manual marks told us. Fairly accurate, actually. But we can see we've got this lovely S-curve. And if we play it, so that acceleration, deceleration in the middle, uh, I don't think I would lose any sleep over it now, to be honest. Would be nice if we could space it a bit differently, but would I murder myself to correct that? No. I've done arc plots of uh, scenes from Iron Giant and Secret of Nim, and you'll be amazed by the kind of sudden accelerations. And, and that's, again, this is just the head. So I'm wondering if we put everything back on. Let's leave everything off and just do the head by itself. And I want to just reverse these two. Command, toggle guide. What happens if I move that? So if I move the head forward a little bit, and you know, we get this. That's certainly one way of doing it. Uh, there might also be a change that we can make here in the auto out because I have the auto set to 80. Let's make it 60. That's looking a little smoother. And this one I think is minus 80. Let's make it minus 90. Tighten them up a little bit there. That is now looking way better. Let's switch onion off. Let's play this through. So that might have broken the neck. Remember that in the previous movie, we shaped between the neck. So let's go in here and command toggle guide. And if you don't have toggle guide, just go through and guide them off the slow way. But it's fine. The, um, the neck is still attached to the head. So now we go into the head, swap those two again, back to the main stage, go into outline mode. And yeah, we're looking at the dots here. So spacing still not perfect. But look, there's nothing wrong with that. Like we we'll get, absolutely will get away with that. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to keep that little dot there, you know, in case we ever need it again, Prick, take it to the bottom and just reverse all the guides. 
I don't know why everything is tearing. I'm going to save this. I'm kind of happy where we are. Okay, no more tearing. Who knows? Sometimes these older versions of the program that I use don't play as nice with Windows 10 or 11 as they were written for Windows 7 and God help you, 8. There is potential problems with that, but so far I've had very few issues working uh, the software with Windows 10. I will keep an old Windows 10 machine just to run this software. So I don't want to use the newer one. The other thing too that you'll find with the newer versions, they can often be slower when you start doing like a lot of symbols. And I have files that I can open and play no problem in Macromedia version 8, which is about 16 years old. When I run them in this version, which is four or five years newer, it doesn't play them as well. There's like a lot of lag. As these programs became more elaborate or they have more bug fixes, that came with the price. The price was frame rates often slowing down when you've got 40 or 50 symbols playing. So who knows why that is. And there's that little uh, doink at the end with the head. Let's go in there and you'll see. Doink. Let's see if we can soften that a bit. And that's from here to there. I think I'd like to soften that. That means I'm going to have to delete these, clear keyframe, and then just move it another two or make it three. Select them, hit F6, so that that dotted line tweens properly. Yeah, that's much nicer. So that just really slows in. The only other thing that, that kind of has been bugging me a little bit is that on this down position, the eye is sort of at the wrong orientation. So let's go in there and fix that. When I start going down this path, there's no end to it. So I'm here, and it's somewhere around this point. I'm going to temporarily make an F6 here so I can tunnel into it. I think we need to make a new F6 here. Now I'm probably going to have to move these as well because this is probably going to break something. So yeah, it should be more like that, right? So padlock that, and then the same thing. Now, this is a very fast movement, so that actually might be fine. I, again, I have no idea what that's going to look like until I come out. So, on this frame here, that was temporary, so I can get rid of that. Let's go through frame by frame. Oh, no, it's coming, to, it's coming in and out too fast. So, what I need to do is keep that down position a little longer. So again, we have no ease-ins or ease-outs here. So what I'm going to do is just put that to there and maybe nudge these to here and ease out. That should be, go into that. This could look awful, I have no idea. And if I ease in, then that gives us more time in this, like in a down position. Ooh. Nope. So let's just do all of this work inside the head. And there should be ease out, right? I don't know why the eases got so strange there. So some of the shape tweening on the inside just feels like it's going the wrong way. I think it's sort of an illusion that's happening. So I think what I'll do is just, I'm going to brute force some of the motion tweens. I really don't want to do this, but this is all happening so quick. This is like a little economics of it. Like, is it really worth my time? going, being too perfect. So let's come out. Yeah, that's looking better. So again, it's showing the kind of, getting a bit hacky there toward the end. This is kind of a natural part of my work process. When I get closer and closer to the end, I become a lot more tolerant of little hack fixes like that because it's just getting us over the line and it's removing something that was very annoying. And I could definitely go in and tweak this a bit more. I'm not I'm not quite happy with what I'm seeing there. Let's go in here. This one here is sitting off too way too much. Tunnel in. And we can even sort of tween the symbol itself. Really getting hacky now. And also I think I would position the, the eye a little differently, like that. Okay. Yeah, 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 not too bad. And if we act, reactivate the robot above, so we can we compare them. So if we go through frame by frame, you can see that the one on the bottom has a much more dimensional view where we feel like the eye is rotating and the head's coming forward a bit. We have the nice leading action on the head. The eye is still sitting off a little bit. And we'll, I'm going to go in and tweak that too. And we have a nice leading action on the head, much nicer arcs. So let's do one last little quick fix on that. Go 
because <laughs> perfectionism. Right. I like it. That means I save it. So one of the things that I sort of did in advance was I, I just made some very simple gradient backgrounds. They're just using the basic gradient tool just to give us something to sit this guy against. So he, you know, he's not just against a white background. It gives us an idea about what he will look like in an environment, especially one with bright and dark areas. Will he stand out against it or not? And we, we know he's going to stand out against a, a white area. He does that fine. Uh, but he also stands out against the dark one too. And this also helps you too if you play the animation against a light background and a black background. It can help you, you know, spot mistakes. Sometimes things will jump out with one tonal range that you don't notice in another. But this is fine. That's that. I will save this as and uh, put that this up again in the Patreon uh, link. So if you want to mess around with it and see if you can push it a bit further than I have and add details, feel free. So in the next movie, what I'll do, I'll just show some extensions and I'm going to include them in downloads as well. They can be very hard to find. So that's very useful stuff. So stay tuned for that last little roundup and I think we can kiss goodbye to the robot. Okay, see you in the next one.